Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel Vmesh. I am Rafia Vikar. Thank you for showing your love and affection towards our previous videos. Please keep on showering your love uh, on our videos. And uh, if you are a new person, then please do not forget to uh, subscribe our channel. Uh, and at the same time, if you like our videos, then I'd request that please uh, like our videos, give it a thumbs up. And at the same time, share our videos as much as possible. So from today onwards, I'm going to begin with a new subject and that is business communication. I've termed it as ABC to business communication. Let us begin with it. So without wasting any time, let us begin with ABC to business communication. First of all, I will be discussing the basic meaning of communication with all of you. The word communication has been derived from the Latin words communis and communicare, which means to impart, to participate or to share or to make something common. It is a process of exchange of facts, ideas, opinions and as a means that individual or organization share meaning and understanding with one another. This interchange of information, ideas and thoughts may occur via different modes in the form of words, signs and gestures. The transfer of information and understanding from one person to another person is known as communication. Now in order to make you understand this particular term, let me elaborate it further. Communication is an essential activity which is significant for survival of a human being. No person can consider his or her existence without effective communication. An individual who communicates well may ha always have an extra edge over the other individual. The success of a person depends on how well can he express his thoughts and opinions to others. This involves helping others understand what is understood by him. Okay, so let us begin with the next topic which is related to various definitions of communication and like you all must be having a look at your screen, you are having around six definitions given by various eminent individuals. Although we have already discussed the basic meaning, but still let me discuss the definition part of it. Uh, you may read these definitions later on, but first of all, let me, you know, discuss a few points which we have not covered up previously. If you have a look at definition number four given by Lewis Allen, Lewis Allen says that, you know, uh, communication is basically a bridge. What is, why is he saying it is a bridge? Because he's saying that it is going to, you know, uh, in case of communication, you have an interaction with the other person, you tell them your thoughts and yet at the same time you listen to them and uh, whosoever is having an interaction amongst them, uh, the two of you are going to, you know, understand the mindset of the other person. All right, then have a look at definition number six and uh, this definition has been given by Murphy, Heidelbrandt and Thomas. The, this definition says that it is a process of transmitting uh, and receiving any kind of verbal or non-verbal message. So like you all must be, you know, seeing it on your screen that in case of communication, we not only, you know, um, uh, communicate with any kind of verbal language, but, but we even communicate through uh, non-verbal language. And this I'll be discussing later on that. What exactly do we mean by a non-verbal uh, language? And, uh, you know, we as human beings we ultimately uh, they want to you know convey our thoughts and opinions our mindset to the other person whosoever is there in front of us so uh, this may be done through verbal modes or through any kind of non-verbal modes so the next topic which we are going to discuss is role of communication in business although Communication plays a very wide role in case of an organization, but still these points can be summarized into a certain set of headings. Let us discuss them one by one. So the first point which we have with us is it increases employee efficiency. 
Imagine a work environment where you didn't receive any information from your manager on how were you supposed to do your job. It didn't, you know, won't go on very well, don't you think? So communication will, you know, somewhere down the line, increase the performance of an employee. They would increase, uh, it would increase the effectiveness and the efficiency with which an employee is going to work. So after this first point, we have another point with us. It enhances business performance. So communication is, you know, not only going to increase the efficiency of an employee, but it is also going to increase the performance of an organization. When everyone is going to work in a, you know, well-organized manner, when every person is going to give in their best and they all know their targets and they all know their uh, ultimate objectives, everything has been communicated with them. So, this is going to increase the performance of an organization. An organization is going to, uh, you know, earn more and more profits within uh, you know, a certain period of time. If everything is, you know, being uh, followed in the right manner, if everything is being communicated in the right manner. All right. So, point number three is avoiding miscommunication and reducing any kind of confusion. If we are going to communicate effectively, if we are going to communicate in the right manner, then chances are that we are going to avoid any kind of miscommunication. We are going to reduce the kind of ambiguity which is going to prevail within an organization, which is not healthy for the functioning of an organization. After this, we are having point number four, which is creating Successful working environment. Creating successful working environment. Now, what exactly does it mean? It means that if an organization, if the employees of an organization are going to, uh, you know, communicate in the right manner, then not only will they be avoiding any kind of confusion, not only will they be avoiding any kind of, uh, you know, uh, ambiguity or miscommunication but they even are going to have a good working environment the kind of working environment will be good enough for everyone and uh, they are going to you know show the, their capabilities they are going to uh, have uh, uh, work in an effective manner so that the organization benefits in the long run so let us start with the next topic which is communication process now, communication process uh, begins with this person who is sender. And what is he trying to do? He is trying to pass on a message to whom? To receiver. Sender is trying to pass on a message to whom? To receiver. Now, let me discuss these terminologies one by one. And then the communication process will be clear to all of you. Point number one, which we are going to take up is Sender. Now, who is the sender? Sender is the person who initiates the communication process. He may be also known as source or communicator. The sender has some information which he wants to communicate to some other person to achieve some purpose. And by initiating the message, the sender attempts to achieve understanding and change in the behavior of the receiver. Alright. Now, encoding in simple terms means that you are trying to give some types of, uh, you know, words or some types of uh, symbols are being used by you. Uh, why are you doing this? Why are you using these words or these symbols? Reason being, you want to communicate uh, things to whom? To receiver. As a sender of information, you want these things to be understood only by whom? By receiver. All right. Then the next thing which we have with us is message. Now, uh, you know, the message is uh, the physical form into which the sender encodes the information. 
and uh, it may be you know uh, in any form that could be experienced and understood by uh, one or more of the senses of the receiver speech may be heard written words may be read gestures may be seen or felt a message may take uh, any of the three forms which are uh, you know oral message can be there then we can be having any kind of uh, written messages then we can be even having some kind of uh, gestures all right a message can be passed on by any three ways and means that is you know oral then we are having written and then we are having gestures all right after this the next thing which we have with us is a channel now what exactly is this communication channel after uh, uh, the sender of information encodes his uh, message uh, now he has to you know pick and choose the mode of transmission now uh, this mode of transmission is you know um, it is often inseparable from the message the channel is a link that connects the sender and the receiver channel is basically going to establish a connection between these two parties um, we can say that air sight and sound are the important communication channels the receiver must be considered while selecting a channel some people uh, respond better to you know formal letters or communications and others uh, usually you know uh, they respond well to any kind of informal spoken words the channels of communication uh, which are you know of, uh, officially recognized by the organization are known as formal channels all right then after this we are having the next uh, term which is receiver now receiver is the person who receives the message the communication process is, is you know basically incomplete without this particular fellow receiver the communication uh, you know will not be completed until and unless the receiver is going to receive this information uh, he is going to receive the message which is being sent by whom it is being sent by our sender it is a receiver who receives and uh, tries to understand the message and uh, if the message does not uh, reaches the uh, receiver then the communication cannot uh, uh, be said to have taken place all right then after this we are having one more thing which is known as decoding now decoding is the process by which the receiver draws meaning from the symbols uh, encoded by the sender it is affected uh, by the receiver's past experience education perception then we are having expectations and mutuality of uh, meaning with the sender all right so after uh, these terms we are having two more points with us we are you know having uh, point number 1 which is feedback and then we are having the next one which is noise let us discuss these things one by one after receiving the message the receiver will take necessary action and send feedback information to the communicator or to whom to the sender all right you know we can say that many a times when this uh, whole process is you know taking place then there is something known as noise noise arises now what exactly is this noise noise basically means that whenever a message is being passed on to uh, our receiver by the sender then there is some kind of you know external disturbance this disturbance doesn't allows our receiver to you know understand the information properly it distorts the communication process if this noise is not going to be there then communication process will take place smoothly but if there is going to be a lot of noise then communication is will be distorted somewhere down the line all right thank you viewers for listening to this lecture and if in case uh, you like it please do not forget to give a thumbs up take care until we meet next time see you